Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Katie. I first wanted to just start off this video by saying the biggest thank you to everyone who commented on last week's video. You guys were so sweet and supportive and just really made me feel so comfortable with sharing like something a little bit more personal, a little bit different than I normally would. And yeah, some of the comments were making me tear up. You guys were just so nice. So I just wanted to give a big thank you. And it was also so much fun to see where in the world you guys are located. There are people from pretty much all over the world here on my channel, which is so fun to see and so cool that just DIYing connects us all. So that was really fun. Today's video is going to be another little roundup video. I've done a few of these in the past, like my top 10 favorite Ikea hacks I've ever done or top 10 thrift flips. And since hopefully it's gonna start warming up here in maybe like a month or so and spring will be coming, I wanted to put together my top 10 favorite planter DIYs that I've ever done. So some of them are actual planters, some of them are plant stands, plant hangers, basically everything for plant lovers. And with that being said, what I wanna learn about you guys this week in the comments is are you a plant person or are you a plant killer? And by the way, you can also be both because I'm a plant person, but I do kill my fair share of plants, unfortunately, but I do have quite a big collection. So when one dies, I still have plenty left, but I would love to know what you guys are, so let me know in the comments down below, do you kill plants or are you able to keep them alive? So now let's go ahead and get started on plant DIYs. So what I'm going to do is take some sculpting clay um, that I got at the craft store and then they come in these little bars. So just separate them out in half and then work with it until it's soft and easy to kind of form. And then I'm going to be rolling it into this little tube shape. Um, it's probably about like three or four inches long. And then I'm just going to press it down onto a piece of paper to give it a flat bottom so that it can sit like a leg on the bottom of my pot. And you're going to want to make three of these and try to make them as equal in size as possible. Um, so yeah, just roll them out and make sure they're flat on the bottom and the top. Next, I baked them according to the direction. So for me, that was 275 degrees for half an hour. So just read the package. And then what I'm doing here is taking the pot and I measured how um, big it is around and then I divided that by three, made a mark every five inches and then just took each of the legs after they were done cooling and I glued them on with some E6000. So they're each about five inches apart. So then once that was fully dry and I knew they were on there very nice and secure, then I just took some white acrylic paint and painted the bottom half of the planter using some painter's tape to tape it off. Now here's where the mistake happened. When I took the tape off after it dried, basically the entire top part of the paint just peeled right off with it like in one big sheet so it's not a big deal this is what happens when you DIY sometimes so as you can see it ended up just being on the bottom which actually is totally fine I like the way it looks and as a finishing touch I'm just adding some little black speckled dots with some black paint um, to kind of replicate that pottery look that I had seen and I did paint the legs as well and I decided to add some polka dots there too just to kind of finish it off and I really like how this turned out despite the little paint incident so I love it. millimeter macrame cord and these awesome geometric wood beads that I found on Amazon I'll link them down below I love the colors of them and the shape I just think they look so cool I'm also using these gold metal rings which I also got on Amazon so I'll link them too so I started off by cutting a piece of macrame cord that was 60 inches long and then I folded it in half then I also cut a second piece and folded them in half together so that they were even then I slid that little loop under my bigger ring and then brought the ends up through it and pulled it tight so this bigger ring is going to be the top of the hanger so this is what you'll hang it up by next I added a little bit of tape to the bottom of each of the pieces of macrame cord so that I could easily string on the beads and I kind of just made up my own pattern I decided to do white and then this sort of like terracotta color gold and then pink and I love the colors again these combinations are so pretty so I did that on all four of my pieces of macrame cord next I just wanted to make sure that they were all even from the top ring so I just measured it out to make sure that each Bead, each top bead was starting at the same level. And then to finish this part off, I made a knot at the bottom of each of my last beads so that they wouldn't slide down and they'll stay in place. 
Okay, then I grabbed my smaller second ring and I picked it up and I used one piece of string and just wrapped it and made a simple knot around the hoop. And then I cut off the end of it that had the piece of tape on it. But then to make it look a little bit more finished, I wrapped the rest of the macrame cord around the ring and then just glued it down. So you're gonna do this with all four of your pieces of macrame cord. Try to make them evenly across from each other. So this next one I tried to line up with the first one. And then I also measured to make sure that I was tying the knot at the same level because you don't want your planter to be uneven when you're all done. But all you have to do is tie all four pieces of macrame cord to the ring equidistant from each other and then continue wrapping and gluing the ends down. And then you'll stick your planter through this and you can hang it up. you'll need the inner ring of an embroidery hoop as well as something round that's the same exact size as the hoop for your base. I'm using cork, but in the original she used a wood circle from the craft store. I didn't have that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the cork. And I'm also using some six inch dowel rods. I started off by gluing one of the dowels using hot glue to my embroidery hoop, and then I flipped it over and I added one more. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach this to my base by just adding a little bit of hot glue to the bottoms of the dowels and adding it to the ring. I'm doing this because it's going to keep it stable so now I can go ahead and add in the others and not have to worry about it falling over or anything like that. At this point I realized I wanted to paint the hoop because I didn't like that the colors between the base and the hoop were mismatched. If you do get an embroidery ring and a wood craft circle, they're probably going to be the same color, but because I'm using mismatched materials, I wanted to keep it uniform. So I just gave it a couple coats of white acrylic paint. And I did this on the bottom as well. I just did the outer edge because that's the only part you're going to be able to see once this is all done. So once it was dry, then it was time to add in the rest of my dowels and you're going to want to keep them evenly spaced. So I found that it was easiest to glue the bottom of the dowel on first and then the top, that just worked well for me. And you just want to eyeball it and make sure that you're not leaving big spaces in between some and little spaces in between the others. But if you do mess up, it's not a big deal because it's just hot glue so you can easily pull them off if you need to. I had to do that a couple of times. But the main point is you're just wanting to try to make it as close as possible Possible, make sure they're not slanting one direction or the other and that is the whole process for the majority of this project it took me about 30 minutes to get through all of this and I think it's looking really cool as a last step I wanted to add some feet so I have these wood knobs and I got these in a big pack so I'll link them down below but I added five of them because since this cork is not as sturdy I wanted to reinforce it a little bit by adding a few extra and I just glued them right on and that completes this DIY. All I have to do is add in my plant. I think it looks so good. Such a simple project, but I really love the boho aesthetic and I think it's going to be really fun to style around my house. I had these little pots that I got. I think they came with some plants that I got at the grocery store. So you can really pick these up anywhere, like the dollar store or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is take a pencil and trace the eraser of it so that I have a little circle on it. And then I measured down how high I had done that. And then I came over four inches and put one at the exact same height. Um, so then what you're going to do is make four holes, two on each side. So I just put some pencils here and measured the distance in between to make sure they were going to be even on the other side. And then I marked those holes as well. This cuts really easy with an X-Acto knife. As always, just watch your fingers, but just use that little circle pattern that you made with your pencil to cut out each of the holes. Then I went ahead and painted this with some pink acrylic paint. Again, you can use 
any color that you want. Um, so I gave that a about two or three coats probably until it was fully covered. Um, let it dry and then I went ahead and added my rope in. So again, this is going to depend on where you're going to be hanging your planter and how low you want to be hanging. So I cut out one piece of rope and then I used it again as a guide to measure my second piece of rope. And then what you're going to do is just take it and feed it through the outside of the hole of your planter and you're going to pull it through and then do the same thing with the hole that's next to it four inches over. And then you're going to repeat this process on the other side and you might have to adjust the rope a little bit just to make sure that the ends are even because you want it to be even on both sides. Um, so just kind of hold it up and make sure that everything matches up. And once you've done that, you can flip it on its side and just take all the pieces of rope and tie a knot at the top and then you can hang it up by this knot. And I just think this one is a really cool and easy upcycle to take a cheap planter and make it look great. to create a plant stand out of a tomato cage but I wanted to put my own spin on it too so to start with I used a hacksaw to cut the points below the middle ring of the tomato cage so it looks like this then I just gave it a few coats of my favorite spray paint this matte black spray paint I've used it so many times I'm actually running out of it I've got to get some more but I think it just elevates the look of so many things it makes it look super chic so here it is looking so much better and the last thing I'm going to do is take some five millimeter macrame cord and wrap it around the two rings. This is super easy. I just cut off a really long piece. I wasn't sure how much I would need, but I just basically wrapped it all around the biggest ring over and over until I made it all the way around. Now, if you end up having not enough and you need to start with a new piece, all you have to do is glue down that last piece and then cut off the fringe and then start over with a new piece and do the same thing. So I'm gonna flip it over because this is actually going to be the bottom, that bigger ring. And then I decided to do the same exact thing on the smaller ring at the top, just to line it all with this macrame cord and make it match the bottom. This is the easiest project ever. You can find a planter that fits perfectly into that ring, but I really think this looks like something you'd spend a lot of money on at the store. So I'm excited with how it turned out. It only cost a few dollars to make and it looks amazing. If you try this one out, make sure you tag me so that I can see it. To make these marbled planters, I used white acrylic paint and I added about three of these little jars to a container. Next, I added a small amount of water to thin it out slightly. I stirred this paint and water mixture with a skewer and then I chose an accent color. You want to use a darker color or a bright color to make sure it will pop and not just blend in with the white base layer. I added a small amount of water to the accent color and then slowly dropped it into the white paint using a paintbrush. It will start to spread out across the surface and begin to take on that marble pattern. I grabbed a tiny terracotta pot, and of course, if you wanna do this with a bigger pot, you certainly can, and I started to roll the pot across the paint, just barely skimming the surface. Doing it this way will give you that nice marble effect, and it looks so cool. Once I was happy with the pattern, I let it dry upside down on some paper, and if you mess up at all and you don't like the way that it looks, like what happened here where I initially used too much water, you can just let it dry and redo the process. The second time around, I added a bit more pink and the marbling was much brighter and looked amazing. For these little pots, it's perfect for adding succulents and these make the cutest gifts. I just add them right to the pots and fill in the gaps with extra soil. I love the way these came out and this process is actually addicting. You'll want to marble everything after you try it. Next DIY, I picked up a few of these round wood craft circles. They're pretty thin on their own, so I decided to stack two together to make a thicker, more sturdy base. To do this, I just added some hot glue to one of them, going all around the edge as well as in the middle. Then I placed one on top of the other and pressed down until the glue had dried. Now it's the perfect thickness to be able to hold a planter. To paint this, I mixed together a couple of different colors of acrylic paint, one light pink and one more of a terracotta color. Then I went ahead and painted the wood circles. 
I made sure to cover all of the outer edges as well since those will be visible when this project is complete. You'll need to paint both sides of the circles for this project so once the first side has dried, flip it over and paint the other side. I also noticed that after the first coat, the wood underneath was still slightly visible, so I just followed up with one more coat of paint. Next, I'm using part of a storage box from Ikea, and if you watched my recent thrift flip video, you'll recognize this. I traced an extra wood circle onto the box using a pencil, being sure to make the lines dark enough to see once the circle is removed. Then I just used my scissors to cut out the circle. Take your time with this to make sure that you're following the line that you traced carefully. Now I've got a perfect circle to add to my wood base. So I added some hot glue at different points and then glued it right to the top of the painted base. I also went around the outside edges and added more glue, pressing it down to make sure that no parts were popping up. To hang this, I'm going to create a simple macrame hanger. I taped this hook to my work table, but you can also just tape your macrame cord down directly. Next, I cut my three millimeter macrame cord into six pieces, each 11 feet long. For the first piece, I measured it out using my measuring tape, but for the following five pieces, I just used the first piece as a guide, and this makes the process go a lot more quickly. Then I took this small wood ring and slid it onto the ends of the cord. I pulled the cord through the ring so that the ring sat at the halfway point. Then I hung the ring on the hook that I had taped down and straightened out the cords. I cut another piece of cord about 16 inches long, and I created a loop by crossing it over itself. Then I placed the loop on top of my longer cords. I grabbed the longer end and started to wrap it around all of the main cords. I wrapped it as tightly as possible, about five or six times at least. To finish this wrap knot, I took the wrapping cord and pushed it down through the loop, then pulled the top piece up. This will hide the knot at the bottom and then you can trim the ends. Next, I separated the cords into three sections of four cords each. Starting with the middle section, I taped down the two middle cords. We're going to create a series of half knots and to do this, all you have to do is take the right side cord, cross it under the two middle cords, and then over the left side cord. This takes more time when the cord is long, but it gets easier and faster as you continue. Now take the left side cord and cross it over the two middle cords and down through the loop on the right. Then pull both ends tight and now you've created a half knot. Repeat this step four more times for a series of five half knots. On the sixth knot, you're going to leave a tiny space between it and the previous knot. So just don't pull quite as tight on the sixth knot and you'll see it leaves a small gap. Now continue with four more knots, pulling them tight just like before. So basically I did a group of five half knots, then left a small space, then five more knots, a small space, and so on. And I did this about seven times. Once I'd reached the seventh round, I moved on to the next section of cords. You're going to repeat the same exact process as before, creating groupings of half knots. To finish this off, I cut another shorter cord and made another wrap knot by creating a loop and wrapping the cord around the bottom. This will secure the cords at the bottom so that they won't come loose. Now all you have to do is add the wood base and your favorite little plant, and it's ready to hang up and enjoy.
pulled from my thrifted stash are some planter pots. I love the ridges on this one. The design is really cool. It's something I've seen on Pinterest and home decor stores as something that's really trendy right now. So I'm gonna give it a couple of coats of this matte white spray paint. And then I rolled out some oven bake clay. And effectively what I'm going to be doing is creating some little decorative handles for this pot. As you can see, it's already looking a lot better with the white paint. So I just used my clay knife to cut two equal pieces of clay. And then I rounded them into a C shape to make that handle shape. And I lined up the second one with the first one just to make sure they were roughly the same size and shape. Then I temporarily stuck them to the sides of the pot to kind of line them up and the ridges really helped with this. And then I went ahead and baked them. Once they were baked and fully cool, then I went in with some E6000 glue and just glued them right to the sides. Of course, I needed to paint them, so I gave the pot and the handles another couple of coats of that white spray paint. Next up is a pot that I've used for a DIY in the past, but I want to redo it and make it into something else. So this time I'm using this terracotta spray paint, which I love the finish of. I used it in my last Ikea video. So I only painted it on the outside at first because we're gonna have to paint it again once the handles are attached. And this time I wanted to make four handles, two on each side. So I made them a little bit smaller. And then again, I just lined them up and made sure that they were the right size and shape. And I'm gonna stack two, one on top of the other on each side. So once they were baked and cooled, again, I attached them using the E6000, gave this another few coats of spray paint, and I just love how easy it is to take some cheap pots, which you can find so many of at the thrift store every time, and transform them into something that looks like handmade pottery. you're going to need some string or some rope. And then what you're going to do is measure out the length that you want it to hang from the ceiling and then double that. So I don't remember how long this was exactly, but it'll basically depend on where you're going to be hanging your planter. And then after you've cut out one piece, you're going to make four other identical pieces. So you'll have a total of five pieces. So I just used the first piece that I cut as a guide um, to cut out the rest of the pieces. Next, you're going to line them all up and fold them in half. So all the loose pieces, loose ends are at the bottom, and then you have a loop at the top. So what you're going to do is just wrap that around itself and tie a knot and pull it tight. And that way you're going to have a loop at the top and this will be what you're going to hang your planter up by. Next, take this and tape it down to whatever work surface you are using and then take some time to just untangle the string and separate it out into five groups of two pieces of string each. Next, you're going to take a wooden bead and slide it onto the first two pieces of string and tie a knot at the bottom. Now, I did mine about 10 inches, eight to 10 inches down from the top knot. Um, this will all depend on how big of a pot you're using, so you just need to guesstimate based on that. And then do this all the way across and tie knots at the bottom so the beads don't slide down. Next, you're going to take the first two beads and take the two pieces of string that lie in between them. And then you're going to place another bead on those two pieces of string a few inches down. And again, tie a knot at the bottom so that nothing slides off. Continue doing this all the way across. And then you're going to have two end pieces left. So what you're going to do with those is you're going to take them and put them together and put a bead on that. And that's going to finish it off. So what you're going to do last is to take all of them and tie another knot about six inches down on the bottom. And this is what your pot is going to be resting on when you hang it up. And then the last step is just to trim the ends. And there you have it, you can hang it up and enjoy. I like to upcycle things whenever possible, so if I use a large can in cooking, I'll save it and turn it into a planter. For this very simple planter, I added a bit of hot glue to the bottom of the can, and then I started slowly wrapping macrame cord around it. I didn't add glue to the entire thing, I would wrap a few times and then add glue to a small section, then continue wrapping. When I got about three quarters of the way up the can, I cut the macrame cord and glued the last piece down. I thought it would be pretty to add some color and make this two-toned, so I grabbed some pink rope and wrapped the top of the can with it. I should also mention you can also easily drill into the bottom of cans if you'd like to add drainage to them, which is a good idea. To finish this off, I added some potting soil and a little cactus. Again, this project would make the cutest gift 
but it's also just a simple, quick, and cheap way to add some fun decor around the house and to show off your plants. Okay, so in addition to letting me know if you can keep plants alive, also let me know in the comments which one of these was your favorite. I know there was a big variety here, so let me know out of the top 10, which one did you like the best? As always, I would love to have you guys follow me over on Instagram where I share lots of DIY reels and sneak peeks of upcoming videos and also let you guys vote on video topics. So head over there if you have Instagram, it's just my name, at Katie Bookser. And of course, if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.